We have now discovered that an annuity is a type of account where payments are made on a regular basis. In the previous lesson we came up with the future value formula which looks like this and we found that it was actually a geometric pattern with a common ratio of 1 plus i and the a value was x. So when, do, when would we use this formula? Well it's all in the name, it's the future value formula. So this type of formula would be used if you want to know the value of your money at some future date. So you typically use it for things like investments or savings and things like that. It's when you're trying to save up money for the future. In this formula, I mean in this lesson, we're going to look at a type of formula that you can use when you have things such as a loan that you take out from a bank. Because, for example, when you take out a loan from a bank, you walk into the bank and you ask them for, let's say you ask them for 50,000 Rand. That 50,000 Rand is given to you on the day that you apply for the loan. So we're going to use something called a present value formula. Present means at this moment in time. There is a derivation for the present value formula, but I'm not going to go through that. It's very similar to the future value, but the present value formula will eventually end up looking like this, which looks very similar to the future value. So in fact, I'm going to show you the future value and present value formulas next to each other, and then we're just going to summarize what each of the different variables stand for. These are the two formulas, the future value and the present value. So PV will be the present, FV is the future. X is always going to be your regular payment, which could take on various forms. It could be monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, yearly. And then there's a few others like daily, for example. But the most common ones that you'll be tested on would be your monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, and yearly, with monthly being the most popular one. Then I is your interest rate. N is going to be your number of payments. And that's it. So present value will typically be used for things such as loans, whereas future value will be used for things such as investments. Technically you could use both methods for both of those, but schools usually show it in this type of way, where present value will be used for things such as loans, and then your future value will be things such as investments. As long as you remember P is for present and F is for future. Now I'm going to give you two very, very important pieces of information that you have to remember. These two formulas were derived in a particular way and so we have to stick to the following two criteria. If you are making monthly payments, then you should always make your first payment after one month. And your last payment should always be made at the end. So it's a bit counterintuitive. We wouldn't usually do that in real life, but that's just how these formulas work. So imagine this, you walk into a bank, you you open an investment account. Now the usual person would want to put money into the account straight away. However, when using these formulas, you only make your first payment after the first month, and then your last payment will always be done at the very end, so on the very last day. If your payments are quarterly, then your last payment will also be at the end, but your first payment will be after the first quarter, first quarter of a year, which is after three months. If your payments are semi-annually, then your first payment should be after six months, whereas your last payment will also be at the end. And then if your payments are yearly, then you'd make your first payment after the first year. If the person who is doing the investment or the loan does not stick to those conditions, then there are ways that we can change things slightly, but I'm going to show you that in future videos. So for now, what's very important is that you know that there are two formulas. One is for the present value, one is for the future value, and you should usually make your first payment after the first compounding period. So if it's monthly, then you must make your first payment after the first month. If it's quarterly, make your first payment after the first quarter, which is every three months, and then always make your last payment at the end. If that changes, however, we do have ways that we can fix that, and I'll show you how to do that in future videos.